Okay, thanks for joining me. This is my third video on the nervous system and we're going to be looking at synapses today. Um, so you can see on this diagram that you've got um, two different cells here. So you've got what's sometimes referred to as a presynaptic cell and then a postsynaptic cell. This gap that you see in the middle here is actually called a synapse and, which, and so hence pre and post. So neuron cells don't actually touch uh, one another. So the pre and the post synaptic cells don't touch um, because they've got this gap here, which is the synapse. Um, this allows a coordinated response to a stimulus. So if we use the example of you maybe doing a bicep curl, so you bring in your arm from a right angle position up towards your hand up towards your shoulder, um, essentially you only want um, certain muscle fibers contracting the muscle fibres that are going to bring your arm upwards. What you don't want to happen in this instance is the muscle cells which control the tricep, which move the arm down. You wouldn't want both the bicep and the tricep to contract at once. Um, synapses and gaps between neurons mean that certain muscle fibres or certain um, effectors can be stimulated and others won't be. So on this diagram of a synapse you have um, one or two things that you may have seen before. So for instance the axon, which if you remember is the part of the neuron that actually carries the impulse. The synapse, which is the gap. And then you have the dendrites on the other side, which again uh, provide connections between different neurons. Now some other bits you haven't probably seen before are the synaptic vesicles. Now a vesicle, all it is is a membrane bound organelle that contains, in this case, a neurotransmitter. So it's a way of delivering a chemical from inside a cell to out. And so you can see that here, some of the vesicles are they're binding with the outer membrane um, of this neuron and they're causing the release of a material called a neurotransmitter. So this diagram is going to take us through the steps involved with the stimulation of a um, pre and post synaptic cell. Um, so you can see here our pre synaptic cell is labelled and it's got this yellow arrow coming in. The yellow arrow represents an impulse arriving. Um, this impulse causes the release of a neurotransmitter which are found in these vesicles. And so what happens is one of these vesicles binds to the outer membrane and it causes the release of this neurotransmitter. The neurotransmitter then diffuses across the synapse um, towards a receptor. It then binds onto the receptor on the postsynaptic cell and this induces an impulse in the postsynaptic cell. Now, there's a lot of difficult terminology there but essentially it's a communication method from this cell to this one. So in summary this is going to take you through some of the points we've covered today. Um, the first one being um, that a synapse is a gap between neurons and when you want something to bridge across the synapse, the first thing that needs to happen is the impulse needs to arrive at the presynaptic neuron. Remember, the presynaptic is the one before the neuron, or before, sorry, before the synapse. What then happens is the neurotransmitter, which is a chemical which is released from a vesicle into the synapse. That neurotransmitter can then diffuse across the synapse and then it will bind to a receptor on the postsynaptic cell, the postsynaptic being the one after the synapse. This then induces um, an impulse on the postsynaptic neuron and therefore the impulse can then continue on to the effector or to its target um, cells. This enables um, a coordinated response. What this means is it means that certain cells or certain effectors can be targeted and not all at once. The fact that you have gaps between the neurons means that some effectors can be targeted and stimulated and others cannot.